A device known as the Faraday Disk Dynamo is, provides a useful illustration of Faraday's law and in induced quantities. Basically, we have just a solid spinning disk, constant omega, constant V field, and it's there is electrical contact possible on the axle here that makes contact with the metal material itself, the conducting material. And there's a load of some sort of light bulb or something. And on the other side, on the edge, I should say, slipping along the edge but electrically connected is the other side of this resistor, this load. And we're going to consider, as we spin this, the EMF developed between the center and the edge. Yes, there is an EMF developed there. So it's a very simple device conceptually. Let's analyze it a little bit. <clears throat> so we have a sector here. Realize that a metal, okay, this metallic region, as it swings along here, it's sweeping out an area. So the area is increasing. And yes, the whole thing is solid. You could say, well, the area isn't changing, but from the but there is conducting material moving through a B field. That's just like a wire coming down here, swinging through this B field. And there be enough electrical forces causing charge separations. That's happening continuously here. So it's like an infinite, potential infinite number of little conductors sweeping along here. So bottom line is, this acts as though there's an area swept out or increasing, increasing the magnetic flux through which a B field is existing and we should have a minus d phi sub dt. We should have an EMF induced. Well, let's figure out what this area is. If we think of a really thin triangle, a little tiny thin triangle here, then the arc length is r theta, r theta. And then one half times r, the radius times this, you know, r theta divided by two should be the area of that sector. So we're just making it bigger here. So 1 half r times r theta. So that's 1 half r squared theta. It's area. The flux is b times area. So it's 1 half b r squared theta. Differential flux is simply the same thing but times differential theta. But differential theta, little differential theta, has to do with omega and time. Omega t, right? Or omega dt. So d d phi is omega dt, so we have 1 half b r squared omega dt. And now we have d phi sub b, and we have a dt. You know what happens when we divide by dt? We get induced EMF. Minus d phi sub b dt, minus 1 half b r squared omega, providing direct current. You can see that in the expression, or omega is a constant, as is r and b. So it's a direct current. Now what's the direction of that current? Well. Probably the simplest way is to just use your QVB force. We have this, we're considering the EMF between here and here. Even though there's other EMFs, we're not interested because we're picking it up on the edge here with respect to the center. So the metal, the conductor across here that's moving counterclockwise, do your QVB force. Fingers out of the screen, thumb to the right, Let's see, that looks like the palm is down. So that's the direction of the current. Current should be going like this, causes it to circulate around this thing. Current should be flowing. <clears throat> well, a little more that can be said about that. Lenz's law says this. That's a good time to formalize Lenz's law. We've actually discussed it already, but here it is in definitional synopsis, which says that the direction of any induction effect is such as to oppose the cause of that effect. So for the Faraday disk dynamo, the current has got to flow in such a direction so that the rotation itself is going to be opposed. This current should not cause the disk to speed up. That'd be a perpetual motion. It's going to cause it to slow down. That is a conservation of energy principle. And it's got to be consistent with this force, the ILB force, IL cross B. So QVB causes the current to flow, causes the charge to move. But now we've established a current. 
So we should be able to do an IL cross B force and figure out the direction of that force. So stick your fingers out of the screen, thumb this way downward. Which way is your palm pointing? Should be pointing to the left. So that's the direction of force. But since we're rotating this way, we really need the force to act this way to counter that rotation. So if this thing was spun up and there was an actual current flowing around here, then we should expect that the current that flows should rapidly bring this thing to a halt consistent with conservation of energy. And that in fact can be demonstrated. In fact, if you have the opportunity, ask me to demonstrate that for you. One more time. Let's look at this Faraday disk again. This time, considering the principles of motional EMF, applying them directly, those principles, that principle, directly to determine the EMF induced between the center and the edge. And we can't directly apply the, the BLV idea. EMF is BLV. Even though we do have a length and it's moving at, well, that's the problem. It's moving at speed what? Well, the V varies with radius. So we have to use dr at radius r, which has a given V. So here's little radius r and our differential, which is kind of macroized for our visual enhancement. And that particular dr is moving at V. So the motional EMF differential E, EMF, induced in dr is equal to VBDR or BVDR however you want to look at it. doesn't matter. I changed the order a little bit because V is going to now have a constant omega, but R is varying. So that's omega R, B, D, R. That's differential E. So the EMF is going to just be the integral from 0 to R of all those little differential EMFs. B omega R, D, R gives us B omega constants, R squared over 2, 0 to R, gives us one half b omega r squared. And indeed, we see that using that method, we come up with the same EMF induced from the center to the edge on our Faraday disk dynamo. And now you are experts on this little device.